Welcome back to Tangata Pacifica. For many small Pacific nations, the Pacific Games is the closest their athletes will get to Olympic-style glory. Held every four years, this year the Games are being hosted by New Caledonia, a country well known for its nickel mining. As Tangaloa Tele Osone Okesene reports from Numea, there's a real buzz in the city. Welcome to New Caledonia, home of the 14th Pacific Games. Competitors from 22 countries have come to this mineral-rich nation in search of one precious metal, gold. The Games open to the magic and fanfare you'd expect for such an event. Under the guidance of two of New Caledonia's best in direction and choreography, local performers embrace the Games theme of the Pacific Attitude. And the opening ceremony has a number of firsts, the innovative use of segways. Umpire and participant representatives ride on top of golf carts as they pledge to enter into the spirit of the Games. And even the Games flag flying low over the host nation. These games have been four years in the making and have been pulled together under the leadership of Games President Pascal Bastien Thierry. The opening is given an extra boost. President of the French Republic Nicolas Sarkozy declares the games open. The Ambu Due then lights the cauldron here high above the stadium in Numea, marking a significant moment as the games get underway. With the Games opening now complete, the hunt for gold begins in earnest. One of the first events to give away some of this precious metal is bodybuilding. In the women's under 57 and 57 plus kilogram categories, New Caledonia scoops gold in both weight classes. UC Tony Lingalinga, men's 80 kilogram gold medalist from Samoa in 2007, can't impress the judges enough this time around. He takes the silver medal making way for Sitani Tautalanoa to claim Tonga's first gold for these games. But for the big boys in the under 100 kilogram class, the judges have their work cut out to find a clear winner. Gold goes the way of Tahiti. Tahu Iro Yip proving too good for Fiji and Samoa. Tahiti's always a favourite when it comes to Va'a. It's their national pastime. So when they lined up for the sprints, there was high expectation for gold. The women's V6 team stamped their mark on the course in the 500 metre sprint, claiming gold with an emphatic win over host nation New Caledonia who took silver and the Cook Islands who claimed the bronze. Tahiti repeated a gold medal performance in the men's V6 500 metres and also lined up in the final of the men's V6 1500, proving yet again their potency on the water. Explosive power on the straights and deft turns around the boys saw them edge out the New Caledonians to lay their hands on the gold. In the martial arts arena, the karate team Kumite in the men's competition came down to Tahiti and New Caledonia. New Caledonia took an early lead in round one. They continued to dominate each successive round. And by round four had done enough to secure the gold medal. More friendly rivalry for Tahiti and New Caledonia, this time on the basketball court. A tight match in the qualifier sees both teams evenly matched. But by the final whistle, home team New Caledonia wins by just one point. In sevens rugby, it came down to the same two countries competing in both the women's and men's finals. Old foes Fiji and Samoa battling for seven supremacy. In the women's final, Fiji drew first blood with two tries. Shrugging off a couple of tackles, still going. Shiteri Russo so for Rusila Tamoy. She is the speedster. Second try for Fiji. Samoa trying to stem the flow, grabbing a seven-pointer. Beautiful in Samoa. But then it turned into one-way traffic for Fiji, with bullocking runs. Very good running from Ana Rokita. Too quick for the cover defence. And some real speed out wide. Consecutive tries. From 24 to 7 at the half, Fiji closed out the gold medal match convincingly with a score of 43 to 7. And Fiji! Uh, mission accomplished. Yeah. Uh, we, came, uh, we came with a mission and that is to get uh, gold back to Fiji.
In the men's final, it's a case of deja vu, a repeat of the 2007 Games gold medal match. And with Samoa never having won gold in this sport, they're keen to write a new entry in the game's history. Just a minute in, Samoa opened the scoring, stretching the Fijian defence to allow playmaker Awale Mai to sniff out a try. Side show of the ball away from the tackle and the great Awale Mai. Fiji comes back into the game with a nearly identical but unconverted try at the five minute mark to stay in the match. Gets away from Awale Mai. They storm back again soon after to take the lead 12 to 7. And he's too strong for two defenders. It's a real arm wrestle, both teams bringing their physical game to this final. Bit of tension. Samoa makes a late comeback to lead by two going into the halftime break, 14 to 12. Early in the second half, a little magic from the boot of Mikaele sees Samoa forge ahead, 19 to 12. For Samoa, what skill, what class, what talent. Lolo Louis adding the conversion to take a 21 to 12 lead. But Fiji are far from done. Some blistering pace down the wing brings them right back in it. There's a little one on one on the outside, and Luto Malangi, who's got plenty of gas, is away in a lovely try under the post. With time winding down on the clock, it's desperation football for Fiji. Wally Moyle just kicked the ball out. But in the end, Samoa emerged victorious 21 to 19. It's a great feeling. I think it's one of the first goals Samoa's ever won in rugby in South Pacific Games. So it's a great achievement by the, by the team. And with the Manu Samoa squad in New Zealand for the Rugby World Cup, this gold medal win at the Pacific Games could be the inspiration they need. I know they've got a lot of pressure uh, hanging on them now, but I'd like to wish them all the best on, on, on their World Cup campaign. So at the end of week one, the three nations on top of the medals table are the host New Caledonia with a total of 113 medals, 56 of them being gold, Tahiti with a total of 41 including 22 gold and Papua New Guinea with 35 medals, 18 of those gold.